Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and today we're going to talk about solving systems of equations. All right, so if you look behind me, you see this is our system of equations. Now, a system of equations is when you have multiple equations, right? Because you can't solve for two different variables in one equation. In order to solve for two different variables, in this case, we have variable P and variable C, you need two different equations. So if you ever want to solve for two different values or find out two different things at the same time, then you need two equations. And if you wanted to solve for three different things at the same time, you would need three equations. All right. So now there's a few different ways to solve systems of equations. One way is known as the elimination method, which is sometimes also called the addition method because you end up adding the two equations together vertically. Right. Another method is the substitution method. And those two are probably the most popular elimination method and substitution method. Those are probably the most popular. Then you also have graphing, the graphing method, where you can like graph this equation on a coordinate plane, graph this equation on a coordinate plane, and where they cross up, where they intersect, that will be the solution. And then even there's other ways where you can use matrices and things like Kramer's rule and things like that. But mainly we keep it with elimination method and substitution method. And today what I'm going to do is the elimination method. I'm going to approach this and handle this using the elimination method. And the reason that it's called the elimination method is because one of the th first things we do is we pick a variable that we're going to eliminate. All right. And you'll see what I mean when I get into this. So first thing I want to do also is I want to draw a horizontal bar underneath it like that. Right. And then I look at my two equations and I say, OK, well, if I add these two equations together, does it, does either of the variables cancel out? And they don't, because if I add two P plus P, that would give me three P. Right. So the P's are still there. If I do 5C plus C, that gives me 6C. So the C's are still there. All right? So none of the variables cancel out. But I got a quick, I got a quick fix for that. What you can do is you can multiply, you can kind of manipulate the system to make it so that one of your variables will cancel out. So the next thing you got to ask yourself is, and it's kind of arbitrary, but which variable do I want to cancel out? And it don't matter which one you want to cancel out. I can decide to cancel out the P's. Or I could decide to cancel out the C's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to cancel out the P's. Now, how would I do that? Think about it like this. What would I have to add 2P to P in order to equal zero? So what term would 2P have to be added to to equal zero? The exact opposite of 2P, right? The exact opposite of 2P. The exact opposite of 2P is negative 2P. So my question for real is, how do I change this positive P into a negative 2P? I multiply. So what I got to do is I got to multiply this whole equation by negative 2. Now, again, that's critical. This is a critical step in this process of elimination. Why, why am I multiplying negative 2 by this whole equation? Because whenever you do any math, you should understand why. The what is important, but also the why. The why is critical. The reason. So I'm multiplying negative 2 times this P so that this will become negative 2P. And then we know that 2P plus negative 2P or 2P minus 2P adds up to 0, which means the P's will be eliminated. All right. Now, if I wanted to eliminate the C's, what I would have did is multiply by negative 5, because then what's going to happen? This C is going to turn into negative 5C, because C times negative 5 is negative 5C. And then when I do my addition, 5C plus negative 5C or 5C minus 5C, however you want to look at it, that cancels out and becomes zero, right? But I chose to cancel out my P's, right? No, no real reason why, just, just because. I just felt like doing that, right? So now, but you also got to remember, you don't just multiply this number by what you're trying to cancel out. You have to multiply everything in that equation to keep the equation balanced. You have to multiply everything in this equation by the negative 2. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to rewrite the top equation because in this example, we don't have to multiply the top equation by anything. There are some problems where you'll have to multiply both equations by certain numbers. But in this particular problem, we only need to multiply the bottom equation by this negative 2. So I rewrite the top equation just as it was. 2P plus 5C is equal to 25. And then I distribute basically or I multiply negative 2 by the entire bottom equation. So this P turns into negative 2P. This C turns into negative 2C. Then I write my equal sign. This 8 turns into negative 16. 
Now I'm gonna do my addition, right? When I do my addition, now the P's are gonna get eliminated. Cause look, two P minus two P, boom. And that's the same thing as two P plus negative two P, right? Understand that. Now I got five C minus two C. That's three C. Then I bring my equal sign down. Then I got 25 minus 16. 25 take away 16, that's nine. So now I got 3C equals 9. So now I got a simpler equation with one variable. That's the whole goal. The goal of combining these or adding these together is to create a simpler equation with just one variable. And we only have one variable now because we canceled out one of them or we eliminated one of them. That's why this method right here is called the elimination method because we eliminate one of the variables. And then because we need to solve for one variable at a time. So now I have 3C equals 9. So now in order to solve this, I need to isolate the C by itself. So I need to get rid of this three. So I do the opposite operation from what the three is currently involved in. Three C means three times C. That's multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. But if I divide on the left side, I also got to divide on the right side. So boom, these threes cancel out. That's going to give you C. Nine divided by three is going to be three. So now my C is three. So now I got to go back and figure out what P is, right? C is three. Let's go back, figure out what P is. So I go up here and now how do I do that though? I got two equations. You can pick either equation. It doesn't matter which equation. Put that down in your notes. It doesn't matter which equation you choose to solve for the other variable. All right. Now P plus C equals eight is a simpler equation. So I'm going to just use that just because that's just what I typically do. So I do P plus three equals eight. Now this says P plus C equals eight. But why does this say P plus three equals eight? It says that because now I know what C is. C equals three, right? So now instead of writing C, I just put a three right there, right? So I could replace. Now, now I'm kind of using the substitution method, even though there's a whole other method of solving systems referred to as the substitution method. But even in the elimination method, AKA the addition method, we still have to substitute at some point, all right? We'll do the substitution method in another video. So now I got P plus three equals eight. I'm trying to solve for P, so I'm trying to isolate P. So I got to get rid of this three right here. This three has got to go. How do I get rid of it? I do the opposite operation from what the three is involved in right now. This three is involved in addition because this says plus three. The opposite of adding three is subtracting three. So I do minus three right here, and I do minus three right here. That cancels out. Now I got P is equal to five. So P is equal to five, all right? Now, when we write our answer, we write it like a coordinate pair, right? Or ordered pair, like a point on a graph. And usually we have our variables in alphabetical order. So we would have three comma five because C comes before P in the alphabet, right? But we're not done. You should always get in the habit of checking over your work. So we go back to both of these equations, plug in my P, no, I'm sorry, my C value, my P value, and make sure that everything checks out. So P is five, so two times five is 10. 10 plus five times three is 15. So 10 plus 15 equals 25. Boom, it works for the top equation. Now we already know basically it's gonna work for the bottom equation because I just used the bottom equation to solve for P. But just for, just for the sake of doing it, let's do it anyway. So five plus three equals eight. And we know that. So this is proof that this is a correct answer. All right. So now that's just a little, little light um, solving systems of equations problem that I wanted to jump into using the elimination method though. As I mentioned, I'll do another video or some other videos on the substitution method. At some point, I'll do some videos on the graphing method and even I'll probably even get into matrices and the Kramer's rule because the Kramer's rule is kind of cool, you know. So and I also want people to understand that there are options. There's not only one way to solve a system of equations. All right. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. Please tell other people to watch the videos, like them and subscribe to the page. And do remember that there is all this math all around you. Peace.